Hello, how are you? Welcome to Real Magic Review on this live show. Happy Bank Holiday Monday for those of you who are having all that. I hope you had a nice Easter if you celebrate it. And uh, yeah, we're here. It's nice to be here. It's nice to be here. It's been a lovely... Uh, I took a day off uh, over Easter, which I haven't done in ages, which was nice. But it's been a bit solitary, uh, which is fine. But it's nice to be talking now and knowing there are people there. Uh, and let's see, uh, hey Manish, KDR Magic Car, how you doing? Nice to see you. Ace, hope you're well uh, and hope everybody's good. I didn't know how busy it's going to be because um, obviously it's bank holiday, people are doing stuff with their families and that's all good. But this is going to be up there forever as well and it's an important one, I think. Well, it seems to be because a lot of people have been asking me about the creative process. So before we get into that, uh, obviously the usual stuff, can you please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And then the more subscribers and likes I get, the more awareness we get of the channel, the more stuff I get to review and the longer I can keep doing this because it is an awful lot of work. Work I absolutely love. Um, and so it's not a complaint, but it is a, it's a lot of work and I'd love to keep doing this. So, um, and of course, connected to that is checking out cardmagiccourse.com. Uh, that is my online card magic course. like a uh, good color change don't want it if you would like a um a free course on the spread cull which is uh, a, an incredible move check out cardmagiccourse.com forward slash cull if you are, are a beginner uh, i will be releasing a free small course an introduction to how to handle decks of cards and things like that soon as well if the cull is out, out of your um uh, not not you're not that part of your journey yet so because it can be a difficult move if you're just starting out but do, 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 do keep in touch uh, and check out the videos. And when I release that, I'll let you know. Right. Stop waffling, Steve. Blimey. Going on about it. But there you go. Um, I hope you're all well. Morning, Colin. Hey, morning in Canada. How you doing, Gary? Nice to see you, Dane. Lovely to see you. Hope you're well, mate. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about creativity. I'll talk about my challenges with it. Creativity for me was a bit like business. I was doing a thing which I call templating. And templating is when you see, say you think of someone like a creative person and you have a template, like a stereotype of what you think that person is. And then it's easy to say, well, I'm not that sort of person, so you don't do that. And I did that about business. Someone said to me once, they said, you'll never be able to run a business, Steve. You're not that sort of person. And I believed them. This was years and years ago. And I've always believed that until I kind of did the work and realised that actually it's not a certain type of person. Anybody can do it. You just got to want to do it. Uh, and, and that was very much the way with creativity for me. I, I was convinced I wasn't a creative person. I, I was the sort of person that learned tricks out of books and did them. Um, and a lot of my life, you know, performing was kind of taking people's existing routines as a street performer. It's a classic thing. Uh, putting my own kind of... Uh, personality to it but not having much originality and you could see it even the stuff I do now the cups and balls uh, Peter Wardell a uh, big mentor of mine it's kind of his routine really and and you know he saw me do it and, and you know, I kind of had his blessing kind of <laughs> he never told me to stop um, and, it, and we worked together a lot and stuff like that but but it's only in the last really the last few years I've kind of done my own thing and felt safe with that and felt um a trust in that. And that's because of this process that I'm going to share with you today, or that mindset behind it. So the mindset needs to be, and I hear it all the time. I hear people, I'm not a creative person. I'm not that creative. Anybody can do creativity. It's a muscle that we have to have to work. And, and it's only recently in my life I've started working that muscle. So I'm in this at the moment. And it was, it was probably about 12 years ago, I wrote a little book called Go Do maybe longer than that, actually, terrifyingly. Um, and it's a little book on productivity. And I just wanted to do something. I was doing all this work about trying to, you know, overcoming your fears. And I wrote this little book and people really liked it. Um, and and I, did, I used this system for the first time there and I've used it ever since. And it's just great. So I still struggle with it. I struggle with procrastinating around creativity. It's something I really have to make myself do. And I think it's a kind of it's like writing. You talk, a lot of writers say that it, once they get going, it's all right, but it's so hard to do. It's like when, you know, when you're at school and you've got homework to do and you've got an assignment to do and it just, you leave it to the last minute because the thought of it is so horrendous. And then when you actually do it, it's not always fun, but you're kind of in flow and you kind of go, why did I wait this line? It's stressful. And you're up till two o'clock in the morning and you get it done. It's a bit like that. So having 
a process is really important. Having a process is almost more important than what the actual process is. Because once you have a process, it's something to cling on to. It's not just what, sitting there with an empty space or a blank page in front of you and going, oh, I don't know where to start. And that's the thing we kind of fear. And it's funny because it isn't scary when it actually happens. It's, it can be quite unpleasant and frustrating, but it's this weird barrier we have. And, and th so this is really for those of you that maybe think that you're not creative or that you are, but you find it a bit like me, you can do it, but then if you don't do it for a while, you kind of, you lose it and, and you have to really push yourself to do it. So, uh, and the, the, the self-belief thing, you know, re we really have to, it's not about talent, all right? It's about really the process and, and looking at the process, but we'll look at that in a minute. I'm just checking that I haven't forgotten anything. Um, no, so the process I'm going to teach you now is based, I did a, it's, it's one, it's part of what I teach when I do presentation skills. So, so this is good for anything. It's not just about magic. It's if you need to create anything. So it can be writing an email. If you need to draft an email and it's an important one, then you don't know where to start. Writing a book, writing an essay, writing a blog, um, telling, uh, teaching someone something. Really important because the, the model I'm teaching you, I'm going to briefly explain, comes from an old teaching model. Uh, but but um, a presentation, what else was it? A uh, sales pitch, an interview, anything like that. It's really, really useful for anything where you've just got to start something. So the first bit you do, and you'll see that these, these post-it notes. Well, first of all, any questions? Um, it is a beautiful day. No questions? Cool. If you want to just ask questions, I will pause every now and then for questions if there's anything I say that isn't clear. I know we haven't really started yet. But it's a very simple process, by the way. You'll see that these, these post-it notes here. So the first thing is... To start, you take the pressure off yourself. So at the moment, I'm writing a show, which is still, to me, quite terrifying. I haven't written a show ever. <laughs> My show at the moment that I've been doing for 20 years has kind of been the result of trial, error, trial, error, trial, which is great, but I'm too old for that now. I want something that, I want a more solid foundation to start with. I, I died on my ass for five or six years. I'm not, I don't really want to do that anymore. You know, while I try all this stuff out on the street. So... You take the pressure off yourself. So this is a really important thing. When you sit down, you think, right, I'm going to write this thing. You don't think of the finished products. That's the goal. You've already made that goal, which is an important one. But you, you know, I'm going to write a book. Right. That's right. The first thing I'm going to do is just sit down and do this thing without any expectation on myself. That's really important because that will help the, the process. And then you want to get yourself a load of post-it notes. Now, it's not the most ecological way of doing it. But I think it's worth it for the power they have. It's kind of a good use of it. And it's not using plastics or anything like that. I'm sure the sticky stuff, but the, 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 the paper. But if you want to do this just with pen and paper, you can do it. What I would say is, is don't avoid getting straight on the computer and doing it in a word processing um, or, or, or in, a, sorry, in a word document or anything like that or Evernote. Because something different happens when you're, you're, you're kind of writing things on bits of paper. There's something occurs that I believe is very different from the structured way of, of computerizing it. Even if you've got like mind mapping software and stuff like that, it's great, but there's that weird thing that when you close it down, it kind of disappears in a file. And when you put this down, I, kind of, I can still see it. There's something sort of tangible about it. So what I, I'll talk you through what I did with this show. First of all, I just didn't know what, I had a vague idea of what I wanted to do. Um, and I had some kind of themes, but that was about it. So the first thing you do, and let's say, um, or you're writing a book or an essay, you, you take the subject and you just start writing on post-it notes, three, four words, vague things, vague ideas, anything that comes into your head. So this was a really big thing for the show because I didn't really know what I was going to do. So I knew it was going to be around kind of there's some kind of personal development -y stuff, some about flow and stuff about sort of um, productivity and things like that. But I didn't want it to be a lesson. I wanted it to be a show, a good fun show. So I started writing ideas. The important thing is here, you're not thinking about the show at the moment. You're not thinking about structure. You're just writing stuff down as it comes into your head. Because the biggest problem you have at this point is censoring yourself. I, when I teach presentation skills and I get people to do this process, uh, called storyboarding. It's kind of a version of storyboarding and not the storyboarding for movies, but a different one. Um, the the biggest problem you get is people start overthinking when they do it. So they'll think, oh, that's not a very good idea. 
Don't even go there. You just need to start writing ideas, 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 ideas. Now, if you want to start, if they're coming thick and fast and you don't use all the post-it notes, do it on paper first, then transfer them to post-it notes if you want, or then that could be a next part of the process. But the, it, it's a, you can, you'll, I'll do this with some people and some people will I'll go back like 20 minutes later and they'll only have five pieces and I can see them. They're thinking about it too much. They're worried about putting something that looks stupid. No one's going to see this, he says on a live video on YouTube, but no one's going to see it when you do it. So don't judge yourself. Anything that comes into your head, you watch. Because what might happen is that you come up with this ridiculous idea and a version of it might occur or might reveal itself. Now, if you're not coming out of anything, you may want to start giving yourself some theme. So if I was sitting there going, I just, just, I just got right. Start with a certain magic trick that you like. Start with that. So let's say I take something like the cups and balls. I then write any idea that comes into my head when I think about cups and balls or anything. It doesn't have to be the magic trick, just the word, just it's word association pretty much. They go down and that, and what happens is when you start doing it, when you start get that release and that flow, your things will reveal themselves and ideas will start revealing themselves. And it's fine to write down notes of ideas when they come, but don't focus on and go off with that idea. Still do the thing, um, dumping everything out of your head onto a bit of paper. Incidentally, it's a very cathartic thing to do. It's very therapeutic because all of a sudden this stuff's coming out and you know you haven't got to hold it in your head. So if you have any ideas about anything, go through this process and you'll, you'll get that relief and you don't have to remember them. And again, yes, we can write stuff at Evernote, reminders and stuff, but it's, it's again, something very cool happens when we do this. So that's the first bit and don't rush it. You know, you could do this over three days. You could do this over a week, you know, and, and what I'm doing at the moment is I'm, I'm doing one hour a day. And it's the first, because of my problems with procrastination around this, it's the first thing I do every day. It doesn't matter. And every day I go, I shouldn't really. Maybe I should get that out of the way. Maybe I should record that review first because that needs doing. It doesn't matter. It's an hour a day I do because I know that if I don't do it in the morning, the excuses are going to start coming. Have we got any questions? If you have got anything, just let me know. And also let me know you can hear me okay and everything's cool. I think we're still good, aren't we? You know, we, we, I know the amount of times that I've been banging on uh, and realised we've gone offline. So let's say you've been doing that and you've got all this stuff. Now I'll give you a couple of examples. And this is from the actual thing I'm writing at the moment. The, I've got a um, huge Valentine's card. Uh, uh, determined to impress. I just came up with this idea I, when I was a kid. And when I was a kid, I used to, um, be, right, I used to have, have a girlfriend. I don't know, 11 or 12. And I'd have a girlfriend. And I'd, I'd have to buy a huge Valentine's card, the biggest one in the shop. And my mum would give me the money. And I had to be desperate to impress people. And I thought, well, there's something in that. Because where does that, is that linked to magic? And it just came into my head. Um, a breakdance story. There's a story I tell you about breakdance. And that made me go, okay, but, um, beatboxing. I've always wanted to do a beatboxing routine. And actually, I've, I've kind of done a little bit of it in the past on stage. But uh, I'm not very good at it. So, and, that, and then that started forming into a whole thing. So basically, when you do this, a uh, cube, you know, my, the, I, I knew I wanted to do something with a Rubik's Cube. Um, and then I just, the minute I found about it, and because I'd written these other ideas, I started seeing, oh, maybe that's not just doing the trick, but maybe that's linked to that, the breakdance story. Is there something in the, the Rubik's Cube in the breakdance story? And is there a link there? And the, the, these links started happening, by the way, as I was doing it, but I didn't let that stop me getting the ideas out. The next stage is where you see the links. So let's say you've got them all there. And then, and this is the hardest bit for me because it doesn't, it's easy, but not, it's hard because it doesn't feel like working enough. And it's something that is very easy to, to, to not do. Then what you do is you, I put it on the floor and I look at it. That's it. For quite a long time. Sometimes I put some music on. Music, the type of music is very important for me. It has to be something that isn't lyrical because I don't want to be taken off of what I'm doing. And it has to be something that's almost ambient and sort of monotonous. Not in, not in a bad way, but I'm listening to it sounds so pretentious. A lot of Icelandic, Icelandic composers tend to be the one. They're melodic, the music's beautiful. It's, enough, it's not totally ambient, it's just sort of sounds. But it's, it kind of it gets me into a certain place. But it'll be, it'll be different to you and it might have to be silence. So I sit here exactly where you are now. And I look at the this and I just look at it and I'm almost letting it wash over me. I'm not trying too hard, but I'm seeing if links arrive. I think I see, look at the cube and I imagine doing that. And then I look at that and because I'm seeing different things, 
things are likely to link more. If I just think in my head, Rubik's Cube routine, that's kind of all I'm thinking of. And I'm, I have to then find something to link that to that might not be apparent or visible to me. It becomes too literal. Rubik's Cube, it's very difficult to do. Maybe, you know, but when I look down, I see Rubik's Cube, breakdance story, this, that flow, all that stuff. And I see, and what happens is links start occurring. And then I start just writing little things in between, if they come to me, or on a bit of paper next to me, I've got all bits of paper everywhere. And I'm kind of allowing things to reveal themselves. And that's where the flow starts happening. And that's where post-it notes are important, because what I can do then is I can start moving the post-it notes around. So I've got an arrow between this one and that one. So originally this one was up here somewhere, and I moved this one down to here, and I'm just starting to create connections. At the moment, I'm not starting to write a show. Now, it may be that you do this and then it just goes bang. And there were a couple of moments where I just went, God, the link is just, it's almost like luck or fate or something, isn't it? You're, you're creating links, but you just see these real clear links that you just, I just wouldn't have come up with had I not gone through this process. So you start seeing the links, you start writing the notes and that could take you, like I said, it could come quickly or it could be something that, that takes a while. The process, the process, the important thing is, again, be in the moment. Don't give yourself a two-day deadline for this. It can work, by the way, once you get used to doing this, but just try and, you know, take time over it. So what I did is I saw, and at this point, I started getting ideas. And then I moved from this onto another bit of paper. Now, importantly, and I'll talk about this again in a minute, you may not, this, you will adapt this to how you do it. So don't take my, you know, maybe start with what I'm saying, but adapt, adapt, adapt. Do, you'll, you'll just know where to go once it's started. So from there... I started writing down on this piece of paper uh, just almost these ideas, but kind of getting them in little little areas. So starting to kind of stru not structure the show, but starting to to create patterns. So the Rubik's cube routine, I had this pattern here and this thing here, and this created the breakdown story. I just started writing the ideas that came to me. By this time, stuff tends to start coming quite naturally. If it doesn't, just allow it to you know, take your time again, go back to it, or go back back one step in the process so at this point I'm starting to I've got it on here and here it's got like um I came up with the, uh, an idea which I don't know if I'm going to do now of using toxic plus and then it's uh about you, what those years mean and that, again I come up with this this idea of a meaningful meaning meaningful dates and that was linked to all this as well so I just something came into my head I wrote that there and that's a toxic plus routine here, it's uh, going faster, Dad. It's a blog I wrote about my son on my website. Check it out on leadwithsteve.com. Um, and that came into my head, and I realized that was linked to happiness, which is linked to, and then it went to my snowboarding accident, and this, this formation there. So I'm trying to create almost like puddles of formation here. Again, you might not need to do that, but that just, it might, you might have the, the show in your head by the time you've done this. So then I've got here, and what I've got now is I've got different parts of the show that have started to come up or whatever you're working on. From there, I now start stru think of structuring the show. So I've got, okay, I've got all these bits. Do they start to go together? And I start writing like a, a brief running order. And I'll tell you how I come up with that running order in a minute. The important thing is the running order of the show, the structure I'm creating can change. Okay, I'm still not at that bit where, you know, we're getting towards now. We're going from this to this. We're going down this little funnel. We're starting to create some structure. And I write a kind of draft of the show. Okay, well, maybe that could be there. That could be there. One, two. And then, and then I'll look at it again and I'll do that same thing I did with this. And I'll look at that structure and does it make sense? And that's when things will start moving around. All through this process, there hasn't been that much constant forcing of anything. It's just kind of, it's just kind of happened because I've allowed it to happen and given it the time. So what I do from this bit of paper is I'm basically moving from there to there to there but actually there'll be a few more bits of paper in a minute i'll show you one to there and this is my nice book that is all posh because it's a it's a thingy one what do they call it um uh what do they call it again you know the posh books um <laughs> and i start writing at the beginning i've got a um a running order in the, on the inside of the front page and i just start writing bits of the show knowing that it's only a draft now and that by that time it's basically rinse and repeat. It's basically, I go, I start writing it, I go away, I come back, I read it to myself and I start moving things around. And maybe if I get an idea for a specific trick, 
So this is for the whole show, and I think, right, the cube trick, I need to script it. I'll go back, to right back to the beginning, and do the whole process on Rubik's. What do I think about when I think about Rubik's cubes? Cubes, squares, being a kid, you know, the Professor Rubik, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and I go back to that. But then I start thinking of more abstract things that maybe aren't related to the Rubik's cube around about that time. Breakdancing cube, that's about the same time when I did that. So, so I'll start creating links there as well. So you basically... You keep going back if you have to to this. Now, if you're writing one a script for one trick, you might not have. You might have to do it once. So I did this once when I did my um, my uh, fiber optics routine, the Richard Sanders rope routine. Now, and I just wanted to to think about some jokes. So I basically wanted to write a couple of jokes for fiber optics routine. So I started. What am I doing routine with ropes? So I had ropes. So what are all the words that come into my head when I think about ropes? Ropes, string, washing line, cord. Uh, yeah, all these sort of things, and actually it's chord. Okay, then I think about chord, and I'm thinking chord, chord, guitar chords, clothing, uh, guitar chords. And then I wrote this joke that wasn't very really good, um, but it's uh, but it always gets a laugh actually. And it was it was uh, what was it again? I've done it for ages. Uh, this is my st- I was doing the rope trick uh, with free ropes, and I say it's my status quo trick. And if you're not in England, you won't get this. My status quo trick. It only uses free chords and goes on way too long, which is quite it was fine, isn't it? But the I only came out, I wouldn't have come out of that from doing this. <laughs> so if you're English, you'll know what I mean. Basically, status quo are a band that most of their songs are using free chords. Nothing wrong with that, by the way, but it's, uh, it's funny. So that's that part of the process. The whole thing is to be enjoyed. It's not really pushing towards that that final goal and that is the real secret of this and that's why it's this one hour a day thing you might think one hour a day isn't much one hour a day over three months is quite a lot and actually and what happens sometimes is like it did this morning i'm now to the point now where i'm scripting so i'm writing the show because because i've been through this process and actually it's starting to really flow now i'm starting to see something that has some sort of narrative i'm not saying it's going to be any good but it's something that i'm uh, to to get hold of so i'm just going to go to the um here. I find it interesting you're building up your show from small single ideas to big. I do it the other way around. I work out the storyline for the whole show and break it down. Yeah, so that um, that's from Mark and it, it totally fine. If you've got a storyline and, and like I said, this is to be adapted. This for me was coming from clean. I kind of had some vague ideas but I didn't know about the storyline and the structure. That had to reveal itself and that's why I had to do this. If you've got a structure and that's, you've already got that, that's fine. You might want to do this for different aspects of your show, like I said, the one routine. And what I didn't want to do with this show, which I started doing, and this was a choice, I didn't want to use tricks that I really liked and then write a show around the tricks. There's nothing wrong with that. I've done that for years. You know, tricks I thought I wanted. There's a bit of that. I definitely want to do a cube routine, but it needed to fit in with the show. It needed to have a relevance to the narrative and the, the reason for the show to exist. So you, you're absolutely... Moleskin, thank you very much. Or well, Moleskine, depending on... Uh, how you want to say it but uh but yeah you're right this is not um this is <coughs> a great way to start if you're looking at blank page and going uh, but you might not be there and you might do it slightly differently but again the, the there's another reason why i do this in a in a second which i'll, I'll talk to you about when we actually actually start structuring the important thing is that you again treat this like a muscle that has to be worked decide that every day you're going to do something on this. And what it does is over time you can't help but start getting better at it. It can't help but feel less scary. I come over here every morning, I start this now. I've put this off for 20 years really writing the show. I'd started having ideas 20 years ago for this thing that I wanted to do. But I put it off doing this kind of show because probably I wasn't ready. But also it was that procrastination thing and it's now is just seems to be the time. But... Um, uh, Mark says, chapters, acts, don't work, the effect stories that would tell the story. Of the, yeah, absolutely. And, and I suppose it's where that, where that idea for those chapters come from. So if you've already got them, like I said, but you might not. Um, but yeah, absolutely and totally uh, various ways of doing this. I'm just going to share a nice way of structuring this. Once you've got all the, if you're really struggling with structure, this to me has been a game changer. And I learned this on a presentations course. Now teach this on a presentations course. And we can adapt this for a routine or we can adapt it for a show. It's from a teacher. It comes from David Kolb, who was one of the people that started understanding that we all learn in different ways and, and kind of, you know, and, and there's been lots of argument about whether we have learning, different, different learning styles or preferences or whatever. 
All I know is that, that when I've looked at this and looked at my learning style or my preference, we can learn in any way, but we have a preference, something that sits well with us. That's why some of us really struggle with books. Some of us really like something more kind of um, visual. And this will give you an idea of, of why. But I, I don't want to go into this in depth because it can get quite heavy, but this is a simplification. Let's just say we got why, what, how, and so what. This is uh, Bernice McCarthy took David Cole's work, made it a bit more easier to understand, and we can use this as a structure. But also understand that, arguably, we may have different learning styles. We may be why. The why is the emotional connection, answering the question, why do I want to watch this? Why do I want to get engaged in this? If you're learning something, why do I want to learn this? The what is the actual stuff you're learning? It's the, it's the data. It's the stuff you're... So if you're learning maths, it's the equations. Um, the how is the bit where we take that on a practice and try it out. And this is the very much a physical thing. And the what if, what I, what I now call the so what, is what we then do next to it. We adapt it. So some of us, again, arguably, are... Our why learners, we work, we, we, we work through that motivation, we, we work through that feeling, that emotion, and that's what gets us hooked in. Some of us are what learners, we just love the data. We love just the learning for the sake of learning, just knowing stuff about something. The how learners are the people like me who just need to get the deck of cards in the hand. If you, I can be an lecturer and I won't learn anything until I've got that deck of cards in my hand. And the what if people are the people that just need to get the stuff, take it out into the real world, start experimenting and adapting. But that's not, well, the important thing is if we're doing a show we, or, or we're doing a presentation, we can actually hit all these. So if we've got what learners, why learners, how learners, and what if, or so what learners, we know that they're all going to get something because we're factoring that into our presentation. But, and I know this is, there's a lot, I'm chucking a lot of stuff at you, but you can go back and watch it. We can structure a show routine or presentation around this. Why, answering the question, why would I want to listen to this? And that is basically getting people hooked in. The classic, you know, you watch any ad on TV, marketing uses this a lot. What is it that makes you listen to that ad or watch that ad or watch more? What is it that makes you not click the skip ads thing on YouTube? That's because there's a why. There's something that's answered that question for you. And very briefly, there are many ways of doing this. Telling a story. For us, showing someone a trick, seeing something that makes you go, wow, that's amazing. And then you want to see more. So it's basically making people feel something. And they won't get on board with your show unless they feel something or a connection with you and there's so many ways of doing this and it's a very in-depth thing but basically it's creating a connection for a show if you go on and go straight into the meat and meat of the thing and just start doing a trick without creating any rapport and rapport building is a massive part of this then a lot of people just won't be there with you so that's why it can be good to just start with something strong because it kind of makes people go right and that's why i want to listen to this or a story stories are amazing because they create empathy so if someone can relate to your story on a human level they've, they've done lots of tests that basically the same parts of the brain light up on on an fmri scans for when the storyteller is telling story to a listener both of their brains light up in the same way um and that creates empathy so it's it's it, you know, and we know that. We know when someone tells us a story, we can relate to it. We feel what that character's feeling. Um, but it doesn't have to be a really in-depth story. As long as you're saying something that they get or understand, it, it's fine. So you need to do that first. So if you're looking at your post-it notes, you can look at your post-it notes and go, which of that fits in with a why? So my breakdown story definitely is a why. It's something that I think people will be able to relate to and people will kind of get on board with and then go, go into the rest of the show. And whether that's at the beginning of the show or beginning of each routine, because each routine will have something like this as well. The what is basically the, the information. And this is the bit we tend to be quite good at with presentations and when we're teaching something. And, and the problem with my school, when I was a kid in lots of schools, I think is they do too much of that. They give you the information without you actually thinking, why am I learning this? And that was my big problem with maths. It was like, nobody ever said, this will be really, really useful. When you're older, you're gonna be able to do this. It was just like, here's a load of information didn't work for me because I'm very much a why and how. So what I would say is if you're doing a presentation, I know we're not talking about presentations here, but don't go, or a magic trick, don't go straight into the thing that's happening. So this is the actual thing itself, the, 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 the magic trick and the nuts and bolts of what you're doing. Now, interestingly, this, it, the how when you're teaching something, so when you're at a lecture, and this is why a lot of lectures don't work for me because they don't do a how. They tell you all the stuff, they show you the trick that gets you involved, but actually, they don't say, right, 
take a deck of cards for 20 minutes, get together with someone and just practice that thing. And now some people are starting to do it now. If you go to the session and places like that, 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 that there's a lot more people realising that actually we need to do this. And even people like, I remember seeing Dan and Dave Buck, you know, they started their workshop by going, get your cards out. And I'm like, thank you, because this is going to be useless without. And actually, there, I listened to... Um, uh, an interview the other day with a guy called Seth Godin, if you don't know him, a marketing guy, but really, really clever stuff. And he actually says you don't learn anything by just listening to stuff. You might learn the information, but you don't learn anything until you start doing it. And this is about the doing it. So if you're teaching someone, you have to say to them, right, try that out. So, and, and the reason it's called the how is that they're feeling how it's done. They can feel the reality of the information. Now, you might be thinking, what's that got to do with doing a magic show? The other thing about the how is that people are taking that information you'll give them and becoming active. They're starting to think for themselves and that creates more of a connection than it can do. And with a magic show sometimes, I think all it is, the how, is, is getting people involved, is making them think for themselves. And, and it is harder to do, but getting audience members out or talking to the audience or, or getting people to ask questions creates this kind of idea that they are part of something. So I've adapted it really from the presentations and the teaching, but the how is really a few points in your show. Give them a chance to think for themselves. Give them a chance to, look, I've got a new bit in my show. Instead of just getting three people up to write something on a bit of paper, I say to the whole audience, right, I'm going to stop for a second and I want you to think about this thing and I give them the instruction. So you've all got it in your head. Have you all got that thing in your head? So they feel like they're, they're actually doing something. So this is very much the doing of it. And I would say if you're teaching or lecturing, Always remember this, give people a chance to play or ask questions or feel like they're part of something. And they feel more connected to the thing that they're either watching. They're not mere observers. And it goes back to what Doug Diamond was saying in his book, that people are participants in something. And this is definitely the participation part of it. So make sure you factor that in. And the what if in our, in our thing is so what? What if when you're learning means, okay, what if I did this? What if I did that? So it's taken that thing you've learned, you've practiced it, you know what it feels like. You make this all practice usually happens in the room before you go out to perform. You go out and perform it and then go, oh, that didn't work. What if I do this? And you start adapting. So you really have to adapt this stuff. A lot of this might not work for you, but the start will, it will get you started. So I'd say start at the beginning and then see where it takes you. But the so what in a performance, a magic trick or a show is really what do you want to leave them with? What's the bit that you want them to leave that after you've finished, you want them to go home with a certain, it might be linked to this, so it might be a certain feeling. It might be thinking about a certain thing. It might be remembering you, remembering you in a certain way. It might be that you just want people to think they saw something really cool and had a great time. That's fine. Or is it a more meaningful thing? Or is it something? So it's really thinking about that stuff. And this has really helped me because I usually forget about this bit. And I, I'm quite good at this bit, but this is my, and we'll all have a weak point. This is my weak point, really. I kind of, and now I'm thinking, what are, when they leave that show, what do they want, what do I want them to feel when they come into that room? But also, what do I want them to feel when they leave at the end? And it gives you more of an idea of, of again, you can then go back and change your structure according to that. Now, some of that you're going to be thinking, I don't quite get that. It almost doesn't matter. The point is that you now have a structure. You have getting them in, doing the stuff, giving them an experience when they feel involved and then to get taken away something. And once you know the structure, you can then start messing around with it. So you can start actually with a how. You can start with people doing something and they don't know quite why they're doing it and then tell them why they're doing it. So it, it can be messed around with this. Now, I know that's, again, I've just sort of blabbled a load of stuff at you, but it's, it's something I think that is, is, uh, is something to start with, again, that makes it a lot less daunting. And what I do now is when I'm, if I've got, if someone says, can you come in tomorrow and just talk about this thing for 20 minutes? So just, I've done it so many times that I can just go, right, why, what, how, so what, how can I do that? And it, it feels like it's got a structure. And when I teach presentations, for the first time, people sometimes only have an hour to work on a presentation just for practice and they'll have something and it's structured. It makes sense. It takes us on a journey from beginning to end rather than just what a lot of people do is just, here's a load of information. Uh, so anyway, I hope you found that useful. So what's the so what? What's the so, so I've, bit, I've given you the, well, the why was, you know, me telling you the, the whole thing about, you know, I really struggle with this because I think a lot of people do. So that's creating a connection. The what was just me telling you what to do. That's, this is the thing. This is the thing you do it. The how, there isn't much of one. The how would be me saying, no, right, get the bits of paper, have a practice. We'll come back and let me know how you got on. But we, we can't do that because on YouTube. But 
trust me, go for it. But the so what? What do I want you to do now? What do I want you to leave this with? What I would like you to do, hopefully, is if you really want to do this and you're finding it a struggle to do it, the, now, as you're watching, open your calendar and put in a diary when you're going to spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour doing this. And if you, if, to make it really powerful, if you're working on something specific, sit and do, put that in every day or every two days or every three days. Make sure it's realistic and it doesn't start freaking you out. You've got to be able to do something you, you really want to do. But we don't tend to put this stuff in the diary. It's, it tends to be one of those, I'll do it one day things. And, but it's so important to me. I'm 47 now. And if I don't do it now, it's like, what am I going to do? Well, I'm 50, 50, 55 again. Something. So, so it's grasping that moment. If it's important to you, you don't have to make excuses for it. It's important to you. And some people won't get how it's important to you. But the people that love you will, hopefully. Um, and if they don't, you know, as long as it hasn't got any detriment to the rest of your family and stuff, I, you know, treat it as sacred. It's important to you, so why doesn't it go in the diary with the meetings and the, the other stuff we have to do? So stick it in your diary and commit to it. And the rule is, if something happens and you can't do it, you move it, you don't delete it. All right? And that's a, something that we, we tend to not be very good at and makes a huge difference. So I hope that's been useful. Um, adapt it, change it. It's not set in stone. Try it. Um, and if you've already got a process, then you obviously you you don't need it because you've already got a process. But it, it's a good one to start with. Um, right. So, any, if you've got any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, come up with what we've done. Yeah, well, it's quite a long one now. So, um, uh, Colin, inspiring as always. I need to box away time to work daily on my mem deck, but a kid freelance hustle in life. Yeah. And absolutely, and that's kind of why I haven't done it until now. The, the, you know, there is something about not beating yourself up about, I couldn't have done an hour a day on this last year. My son's now 11 and he's starting to, you know, he gets himself to school and, and I started to go to bed at really early because he doesn't get me up really early so I can get up really early. I get up at like half five now, I go for a run, come back, get the kids to school, they go off to school and then I come and do this. So it's so it, you know, it's not about beating yourself up. And I think it's really powerful doing 10 minutes of this stuff. So if you think I've got 10 minutes and it's getting all the flip charts out, do it on a bit of paper, just something. So again, you, you adapt to what your situation is. Something else that is really important to me as well is something about environment and place. I sit at my desk and do all my work. I sit on here and do my reviews. When I do that first bit, it's mayhem and it's always on the floor. It feels more creative to me to be kneeling over a flip chart pad and doing this stuff. It just, there's something, again, that's something different that happens. It'll be different for everybody, but there's something about, and, and Disney talk about this a lot, you know, way back the Disney strategy about kind of having a place that is your creative place. And I know that you might not have a room in your house, I haven't, but it might be that you're just doing a different situation when you're doing your creative work. And for me, it's a more of a creative thing to be on the floor with a paper on the floor. To do that, it kind of gets me in a different space and we need to do whatever we can to kind of help us um, help us do this. And, and again, don't feel silly. It's whatever works. People have got the most insane kind of rituals around this stuff. But the important is that there are rituals. Um, uh, do you put the story first or the effect into the show? I think it's about what works. And it will be different every time. And that's why it's a fluid approach. Like the, if you look at this as a process, you go, right, you do, the, you do the, the data dump. You do the stuff on the flip chart and then you write this and you're like that but what will happen is this sometimes when you start doing this an idea will just go boom and it'll just come into your head and you go right I need to write that down write down and come back to the process so it's not about going down into that thing and forgetting about the process but do it as long as you can because and sometimes you're just getting a whole you know the whole show at one point kind of came into I had all this stuff and I just went oh and it just it just came into into my head and I've got it up there which is a which is a proper running order, which is now to be adapted and, and polished and, and then stuff will move around as well. So I think it's whatever works. But I would say if there's an effect you really want, start with that and see if a story comes from that. Do the, the brainstorming, the, the thing that I talked about there. Or if there's a story you have in your mind, start writing the story, write things that are to do with that story. So my breakdown story, I write inspiration, being a kid, flow. Um, learning something, trying to be cool, all this stuff. What does what, and other things will come into your head that happened at that time that might be connected to it. Which may oh that's got well, that's connected to that, like I did with the cube. You know the cube's connected to that feeling, not the 
the experience itself. So then I can create a story around that. So I would say whatever works for you. Um, right. God, that was a, right, a waffle, wasn't it, for 42 minutes and 48 seconds. Um, listen, thanks a lot. I hope it was useful. And, you know, it's only one way of doing it. There are hundreds of ways of doing it. Do what works. Uh, you know, research it. Research creativity and whatever. But, so uh, thanks so much. I really appreciate you, man, for Flipped Over Productions. Thank you very much. And I hope you did. And all I want this to do is be is to be helpful. I don't, you know, so, so as long as it's helpful in some way, even if you don't use the whole thing, um, my job is done. And and coming over and doing this today was was well worth it um thanks ace cool have a good one so before we go um a couple of things check most mondays i'll be here um but obviously i'll put something on the on the community so make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon so if i do say i can't make it uh, you'll know um, there's some really interesting um reviews coming up of stuff that you may not have heard of i've recorded a couple of things today but do watch the stuff that doesn't you might think oh, i've never heard of that i don't want to watch that if you're anything like me i'm like that with podcasts i don't want to hear that any of you i don't know who that is and actually i realized that that's the stuff with gold so um got some really interesting reviews coming up please have a look at them and comment because we do the comments on comment sessions on thursdays at five uk uh as i said like and subscribe do check out cardmagiccourse.com please that'd be lovely because then i can keep doing this forever and that'd be great because i love it and, uh, and if you want a free course, do the uh, cardmagiccourse.com forward slash cull, C-U-L-L for the spread cull uh, course, which I created just for you. So have a look at that. Um, and let me just, I'm, I've done my last minute questions. I've done all that bit. So I'll just, just carry on there. Oh, oh, do I, uh, nail writer? No, I don't use a nail writer. Can't get things to stick on my nails. I've got really porky thumbs. It's like hobbit thumbs. Look at that. That's a hobbit thumb right there. Massive. My big toes are like that as well. Horrible things. Um, I can't get anything to stay on there. I don't know you can get Vernet ones, but no, I'm, so I'm doing a, a different one. Um, no worries, Dane. You're welcome. My uninterested in Magic Sun has been listening in the background. He just said, I like this guy. Hey, endorsement indeed. Brilliant. That's a lovely tune. Thank you. Um, Tiago, I think that's how you say it. Uh, sorry for last minute question. Do you workshop your show to close friends and how do you take feedback? Okay. Feedback's a different thing. Maybe we do a different... Remind me. Send me an email. Steve at carbmagiccourse.com. Remind me to do a session on feedback. So important. On the course, we'd have weekly sessions on Zoom. And those sessions, a lot of the time, are somebody working on a trick and we give them genuine feedback. Meaning, we, we don't hold back. I mean, we do the kind stuff. That looks good. You know, got to be, be nice. But we do the stuff. That needed a bit of work. And, and it's we've got a thing now where it's a really safe space. It's not about criticism. It's about being realistic. So I think I now like my feedback to be straight. I like it to be like, you know, give it to me straight, but some people you've got to be a bit softer. Um, I would say, just think about how you like it. Some people want it right between the eyes and I'd say, ask them, how do you want your feedback? You know, or, or importantly, what specifically do you want feedback on? Do you want it on performance? Do you want it on the technique? Because sometimes I'll know that a move isn't there, but I'll just say, what do you think of the idea? And then someone said, well, I saw that. And I'm like, that's not what I'm saying. Do you, do you think it's something worth, worth looking at and, or the concept or the premise? Um, so I would say feedback is incredibly important. In answer to your question, yes, I will. I prefer to show it to complete strangers. So I think for me, and again, it's a personal thing, I'm quite happy to die on my ass in front of people I don't know. I find it really hard struggling in front of friends. But that's just me. Um, so if I can, I'll be doing some previews and showing some people some things on Zoom. that I kind of know, but aren't my really close friends because there's a lot of stuff going on when that happens for me. It's a bit of an odd thing. Um, but they will be coming to the show, a lot of friends, so it's kind of the way that works. Um, uh, you're okay, Robert. Well, uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. But always learn that feedback, by the way, is information that goes into the system to make it better or not. Don't treat it as a as a criticism it's just information and you don't have to agree with it um i've listened to it with respect don't kick back don't argue because i'm terrible at that i thought yeah but you know start making excuses you listen to it you take it on board and let it sit and that's the biggest tip i can say with feedback and it's absolute gold if you can get feedback um you'll have to join the course yes you will check out car magic course have a look at it uh thank you everybody uh it's been a real pleasure um, um and be, you know be safe have a good one and hopefully I'll see you one day. Uh, imagine that. I, I won't just be sitting in this room talking to you. Take care, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.